Well, good morning, Sherwood family and friends. I'm Pastor Dave, and I want to welcome you to our online service this morning. Today, because of all the COVID restrictions, we've had to make some adjustments and changes. Consequently, you will be uh, watching this morning the service that we recorded from uh, a year ago at this time. And trust that it will be a blessing to you. We invite you to join us online today and participate through the chat. Uh, one of our pastors will be uh, there and available to pray with you and to encourage you in your faith this morning. So take uh, a moment, get a coffee, and enjoy the service. May God bless you and those you love today. Thank you for joining us. Well, good morning, Sherwood family, friends, extended family from all over the nation. Good morning. My name is Pastor Brad. Welcome to Sherwood Online, the online ministry of the Sherwood Church of the Nazarene, located right here in what I hope is sunny Prince Edward Island. Good morning, Pastor Dave. How are you? Well, I'm doing great. Happy New Year to you, too. Happy New Year. Pastor Annette, good morning. Happy New Year. Good morning. Happy New Year to you both. How is everyone this morning? Excellent. We're ready to do our part. Well, then let's keep going. I'll do mine. All right, folks, you know what I like to do at the very beginning. I want to remind you, listen, it's a new year. It's a time for new things. So have you liked our Facebook page in the year 2021? No. Well, why don't you make that your New Year's resolution? And that way it'll be something you can check off immediately and say, I did it. I succeeded in the year 2021 by liking the Sherwood Church of the Nazarene Facebook page, by subscribing to the Church of the Nazarene YouTube channel, where we're also broadcasting live right now. And I really went crazy this year, and I subscribed to their podcast, Audio, which is available wherever podcasts uh, are listened to, so you can find, what, find us wherever. Um, and also, if you really want to go buck wild this year, why don't you go on over to our website, www.naspei, and contact us. Let us know that you're there. Get on our mailing lists and find out all about what's going on in the Church of the Nazarene, specifically the Sherwood one in the year 2021. Uh, also, if there are prayer requests that you have or are aware of and you would like to let us know, you can either do so by dropping those in the chat right now on Facebook or YouTube if you feel comfortable, or you can reach out to us on that website that I mentioned, www.naspei.com. And from there, you can let us know what we could be praying for, and we can mobilize the church to pray and gather around for that. I believe that's all I have in terms of uh, a welcome. Why don't we get into our first icebreaker of the new year? So our icebreaker is... If someone offered you a gift card to any store that you wanted... Which one would you choose? Don't forget to let us know in the chat what you would choose. And uh, maybe Pastor Net will buy one for every store you mention. <laughs> Does it have to actually have money on it? <laughs> oh, yeah. No, just go grab a bunch of blank gift cards. There you go. You've... Um, this is hard because there's so many places I do like to go to. Practically, I would say someplace like Walmart or something like that. Get the best bang for but, your buck. But if 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 money were no object, I would like a gift card to the Apple Store. <gasps> oh. I know. Okay, let's let's what should we should we put a denomination on this so that it, that might? What do you think, Pastor? How much should be on this gift card? Well, knowing what she would like to buy, it would have to be pretty significant. That's true. That's yes. true. More uh, than ten dollars. More than ten. Yes. So there, that's the bar that we're setting. It's more than ten dollars. So Pastor Annette's going to the Apple Store. If I had a thousand people, give me a ten dollar gift card. All right. Okay. Okay. <laughs> we're, we're, we're putting the call out there for the first thousand people. <laughs> And what is your mailing address again? <laughs> yeah. Sherwood Church of the Nazarene. <laughs> there you go. Pastor, what about you? Pastor Annette's going to the Apple store. Where are you headed? Well, I'm not an Apple person, so I don't want an Apple gift card. She can have it. Yes. Oh, so you want the same, but you forfeiting yours to her. Well, no, no, no. <laughs> yes. 
<laughs> I, 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 think I would like I think I would like to get a, a gift card to Amazon ca that's good because then you, you know you can shop the world yeah that's true uh, you pastor you took mine I I was going back oh. and forth between um, either Best Buy because I thought if I go Best Buy I can either buy from my Apple you know stuff that I've got uh, mm -hmm. or I can buy for like computer stuff or video game stuff you know things that I enjoy but I can do all that through Amazon and more. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Yeah. Pastor Brian, I thought you'd be Long McQuaid and Pastor Dave, I thought you'd be Tim Hortons. <laughs> well, uh, you know, I've got, I don't really need any more equipment in terms of my sound or my guitar stuff. So Not about need. <laughs> I, well, I don't go to Long McQuaid that often. I know. Okay. So I would go, I'm gonna, I've, I'm putting my stake in the ground and I'm, I'm joining the pastor and I'm saying Amazon. Okay. Yeah. Now the impatient part of me says go to Best Buy because then you have it immediately. Um, you and have it, to wait a week otherwise. You got to wait a week otherwise. But but uh, no, I'm still I'm going with it. I'm going Amazon.ca as well. Join the pastor on that one. Uh, so let us know what you would do. And again, if you feel so inclined, we're happy to share our mailing addresses. I'm just kidding. <laughs> Why don't we get into our personal declaration? It says today I choose to abide in Christ. I will remain connected to him by engaging in his word, listening to his voice, obeying his commands, and loving one another. My desire is to bear much fruit for his glory. Pastor Dave. Well, good morning, everyone, and a happy new year to you. And this uh, uh, podcast today is coming to you from, as we already know, the Sherwood Church of the Nazarene, located in the birthplace of Canada, right here in Charlottetown, Prince Edward Island. One of the most desirable places to live on the whole earth Amen. is right here Woo. and we're, we've got our stake in the ground. Mm -hmm. And so uh, we're blessed in every way. And thank you for joining us this morning, whether you're uh, close to home here or somewhere around the world, we're so glad that you uh, are joining us today. Uh, just wanna say right now that uh, at the end of the podcast today, we're going to have a time of communion. Mm -hmm. And so if you might find a moment to have some bread and juice and have that available to you, uh, that would be muchly appreciated. Join with me as we pray together and welcome the Lord's presence into our gathering this morning. Mm -hmm. Lord, in this new year, we recall your faithfulness. Thank you that you walk with us every day and that you are with us in each moment. Thank you that your promises are true and your goodness never fails us. In this moment, we come to you and we lay our lives before you. May we worship and adore you with every fiber of our being. May everything within us cry, holy is the Lord God Almighty, who was and is and is to come. And so today we join with all those who worship and confess you as Lord, from generations past and present, and with all the angels that sing in heaven of your greatness and your beauty. Lord, we adore you. Lord, we love you. Lord, you are so precious to us. Thank you for your mercy and your peace. Amen. 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 Well, uh, what we've got coming up next is a community connection moment with Pastor Annette. And so, Pastor Annette, why don't we just turn it right over to you? And you can just, you just go, go, do, just your, go. do your thing, do your so thing. In the past, um, we've always done something here, part of our tradition, part of our heritage here is doing a Looney Tooney bin. And so every month we collect um, as a congregation um, money towards a, an organization or um, a, something in the community that we can be then partner with and work with. So every month we pick a different group. So for the month of January, through the whole month of January, and good news, January's got five weeks, so there's, there's extra there, um, we're going to support the Gideons. And so just watch throughout. Um, there's going to be many ways that you can contribute. There will be um, in person where you can contribute um, in whatever way possible. And um, I'm hoping to have a conversation with uh, Mr. Larry Sider, who is our Gideon's uh, representative and, and see what we can do with that as well too. But our, our connections, our means of connecting this month as a church is through Gideon's International. All right. 
Well, thank you, Pastor Annette. Pastor Dave, is there anything that you wanted to ask or any further comments or shall we continue on? Well, just, just a word to say uh, how much we appreciate having Pastor Annette um, on our team mm -hmm. during these days. It's been a few months now since you have uh, rejoined us. And mm -hmm. of course, you're serving as our, our uh, community connection pastor, uh, building the bridges between uh, the congregation here and the needs of our community. So thank you for your faithful service to the Lord and certainly wishing you a wonderful and a blessed happy new year mm -hmm. as we move forward in 2021. Take it away, Pastor Bradley. All right. Why don't we uh, take some time just to open our hearts and, and worship in music with our Sherwood worship team singing Hope of the Nations. Jesus, hope of the nations. Jesus, comfort for all. song that was this morning 
I want to uh, just share a, a little bit with you this morning, the Sherwood family, as we begin the early days of 2021. This, of course, is a, a new year, and we, of course, had New Year's Day, but really New Year's is, a, is also a season, and it's an opportunity to reflect on uh, who God is and what he's called us to do and who he's called us to be. And as I was thinking about that whole um, situation, I, I took some time to reflect on the, the Jewish understanding of the new year. And of course, we are part of the Judeo-Christian heritage. Mm -hmm. And I want us to reflect, actually, for most of this month, on the, uh, on the Jewish understanding of the new year. Now, in, uh, in Jewish tradition and culture, uh, the new year is not celebrated on a calendar like ours in the sense of January 1st is the new year. But the new year celebration actually happens uh, in September and October. And so my, my concern is not about timing so much as intention. And I'm going to give a little bit of background to help us understand and set some context for the next number of Sundays and the early days of 2021. Uh, Rosh Hashanah is, is called the Jewish New Year, and it is one of Judaism's most holy days. It means the head of the year or the first of the year. And well, on our calendar, New Year's begins a, a new a new date and a new time. In the Jewish culture, we need to understand that Rosh Hashanah commemorates the creation of the world and marks the beginning of what is called 10 days of awe, of reflection, of prayer, of repentance and worship that culminates in what is called the Yom Kippur holiday or known as the Day of Atonement. And so Rosh Hashanah and Yom Kippur are the two holy days in Judaism that are considered uh, very special and significant. And, and so uh, I'm not trying to reproduce that in terms of September, October timeframe, but bring that intention into what is our understanding of the new year. The reason for these significant celebrations is the fact that it's in this time that the, the celebration occurs of God's creation of the world. That's what the new year really means. And so in this time, not only celebrating God's creation, but also realizing that in this season, there are choices that lead to life or death and that God is judging uh, our, our hearts and our lives in light of what he has established. And so from a Jewish perspective, from a Jewish perspective, Rosh Hashanah and the days surround it are a time for personal spiritual inventory. It's a time for prayer. It's a time for good deeds. And it's a time for forgiveness and making amends with others. And so Rosh Hashanah is a, a contemplative holiday and celebration. We, we tend to create parties and um, all kinds of ideas out of New Year's that really are not part of, of the Jewish culture for sure. This is a somber time. This is a time to do spiritual business with God and with one another. And so we don't want to miss this opportunity, and this morning we're going to begin uh, a four-part series on, on what is really the journey into our own hearts, and we're going to be talking uh, from Psalm 51 in just a moment in terms of personal spiritual reflection and spiritual inventory and opening our hearts to God. The other thing that I just want to say right now is that as part of the Jewish holiday, uh, the, um, the shofar was sounded. And it, it was a call to repentance and a call to remind the Jews that God and God alone was their king. And so as we begin 2021, let us hear 
that sound of the shofar, that uh, there is a call to repentance and a call to remember that God is our king. <laughs> invite you to engage with us in God's word this morning. The tool that we use, of course, is something called SMORP, which is scripture, message, obedience, repentance, and prayer. It's an acronym. And as we begin this morning on that journey into our own hearts during this new year season, Pastor Nat, would you read for us and follow along at home, get out your Bible, or you can also watch on the screen today, Psalm 51, Psalm of David, Pastor Nat. Thank you, Pastor Dave. What a pleasure this is to read this. Have mercy on me, O God, according to your unfailing love, according to your great compassion, blot out my transgressions, wash away all my iniquity and cleanse me from my sin. For I know my transgressions and my sin is always before me. Against you, you only have I sinned and I done what is evil in your sight. You are so right in your verdict and justified when you judge. Surely I was sinful at birth, sinful from the time my mother conceived me. Yet you desired faithfulness even in the womb. You taught me wisdom in the secret place. Cleanse me with hyssop and I will be clean. Wash me and I will be whiter than snow. Let me hear joy and gladness. Let the bones you have crushed rejoice. Hide your face from my sins and blot out all my iniquity. Create in me a pure heart, O God, and renew a steadfast spirit within me. Do not cast me from your presence or take your Holy Spirit from me. Restore to me the joy of your salvation and grant me a willing spirit to sustain me. Then I will treat, teach transgressors your ways so that sinners will turn back to you. Deliver me from the guilt of bloodshed, O God, you who are God, my savior, and my tongue will sing of your righteousness. Open my lips, Lord, and my mouth will declare your praise. You do not delight in sacrifice or I would bring it. You do not take pleasure in burnt offerings. My sacrifice, O God, is a broken spirit, a broken and contrite heart. You, God, will not despise. May it please you to prosper, Zion, to build up the walls in Jerusalem. Then you will deliver in the sacrifices of the righteousness, righteous, in burnt offerings offered whole. Then bulls would be offered on your altar. All right. Thank you, Pastor Nett, for reading that. This, of course, is a Psalm of David, and uh, it's a response to the time when the prophet Nathan came to him and confronted him with his sin. He had committed adultery with Bathsheba, and uh, in, in responding, he writes these words of, of repentance and reflection uh, in his own heart. And so they are significant not only to him, but I believe speak to us today. If in this new year, we are prepared to open our hearts and take that spiritual inventory of our lives, we will discover, we will discover some significant things about who God is and what he desires to do in our hearts. And so, of course, as we begin this reflection this morning, there, there are words or phrases that, that no doubt just really stand out to you and 
really speak to your heart and capture your thought and your attention. Uh, just to uh, offer that to both of you pastors this morning, what are some things that are significant to you this, today as you read this passage? Pastor Annette, please. Um, the, the, there's a couple of words that jumped out at me, both in verse two and verse seven, and the words are wash and cleanse. And those just really, really jumped out to me. Um, and it, it really goes along with verse 10, created me a pure heart. And when I, I guess when I looked at that and I thought, wash and cleanse, do we wash things that are, aren't dirty? So if we're asking for washing and cleansing, then what's dirty? What do we need to clean? Okay. All right. Pastor Bradley. The part that jumped out for me was verse 17. I mean, there's a, the, there's every, a ton. Every single verse is, mm -hmm. is, yeah, there's a lot. But verse 17 for me, my, my sacrifice, oh God, is a broken spirit, a broken and contrite heart you, God, will not despise. And I, I've got more to say about that, but I'll save it. Okay, well, let me, let me just jump right in here and suggest that that verse, verse 17, is the one we begin to memorize this week. Okay. Mm -hmm. Would that be good? Uh, yes. You know, if, if all of us intentionally uh, made that front and center, my sacrifice, O oh God, is a broken spirit, a broken and contrite heart, O oh God, you will not despise. Wow, wouldn't that, to hide that in our hearts would, mm -hmm. would be significant. Yes. Um, Pastor Nat, you kind of stole some of my thunder that I had all ready to roll. Uh, sorry. <laughs> That's okay. That's okay. It usually happens to me. Uh, so. But I, I'm going to build on that because I, I circled uh, wash and cleanse. And then I, I kept going down the list here. Verse 10, create. Verse 12, restore. Mm -hmm. Verse 14, deliver. And verse 15, open. And so those are all action words that are definitive in nature, but are attributed to what God can do, mm -hmm. not what I can do. Mm -hmm. And so uh, those are, those are uh, significant words in addition, of course, to wash and cleanse. And, and so having said that, then, you know, as we think about God's nature and God's work, this passage is, is it's low hanging fruit yep. as to who God is and, and how he operates and how he works in our lives and in the world. And, and I think the most significant thing in here about God and his nature and his work is that God is approachable. And I can come to him just as I am with all of my shortcomings, with all of mm. my sin, with all of my failures, with all of the things that have um, uh, come up short in my life. I can bring that to God and he is approachable. Um, otherwise, otherwise we'd have to run from him, but yeah. He is a God that we can run toward. And, you know, over the years, I've had different people come and say to me, you know, well, God can't forgive me. God can't do anything with me. My life is just a shipwreck. And I have never seen one person yet who is beyond God's mercy and forgiveness and healing. Mm -hmm. And so he's approachable. And, and the good news is here is that he does for me what I cannot do for myself. And that's the divine work. That's, that's who God is. He, he, he is able to cleanse and create and restore and deliver and open. Uh, those are things that uh, I'm not able to do on my own. And so uh, that's, a, that's a, a word that shows us that God is restorative in nature. He loves to take all of the failures and all the shortcomings and pour his mercy and grace and forgiveness into it and restore it into something that is beautiful and brings him pleasure and delight. And so that that's really where I see God at work here in this particular uh, passage. Now, 
I'm sure the two of you see some other things as well. Um, and if I uh, if I stole your thought, uh, I'm not apologizing. No, but that's all good. But uh, you may want to add to that part of the conversation. Any either one of you go ahead. Pastor, you said it well for me. Uh, I just I really want to add to what you said because what you said yes. really aligns to what I was thinking as well too. As I read through this and was thinking about David calling out, um, calling out to God, and not just David, but we all do this. Um, the very nature of God is that he is God of not just second chances, but third, fourth, fifth, infinite chances. Um, in this passage, right in verse one, it, it, David says, because according to your unfailing love, according to your great compassion, mm. those are the very nature of God, unfailing mm -hmm. love, great compassion. And he shows us that time and time again, how much he loves us. Mm. um with multiple chances not just one not just two multiple over and over wow that that's really at the foundation of how god operates and who he is mm. all right uh if you're if you're at home this morning and uh just jotting down some thoughts and you may want to just uh share that in the chat line uh today please do so and I hope that you are writing some of these things down in your journal uh, as you're following along this morning, because this is not just about listening to us, but engaging with us in hearing God and listening to his word and his heart today. The second part of uh, uh, SMORP, of course, is the message. What, what's God saying to me today? Uh, where is that point where I'm listening to his heart and, and, and tuned in to what he wants to impart uh, to my life and to yours this morning? And as I, as I reflect on this, because, you know, oftentimes God gives us a word of encouragement, a, a word of direction, a word of guidance, sometimes a, a, a word of counsel that we are in need of in the moment. And, and the things that I heard as I've been working through this passage today is that I, I sense God saying to me that I am safe to be honest with him and myself at the same time. Um, the, the, there's a call to authenticity here. And oftentimes we, we aren't honest with ourselves Sometimes I'm not either, and, and then it's hard to be honest with God. But I hear that word of safety, that, that I can take that journey of spiritual reflection and inventory, and I don't have to pretend, I don't have to hide, knowing that he will not turn me away. And I, I just, I think that is so powerful because we, we hide and, and, and I know what that's like and you avoid and you, you push away and, and, and here I, I, I feel safe today to take that journey into my own heart and what he wants to say to me and do for me and the places where he wants to cleanse and create and restore and deliver and open in, in my heart even this morning. So Listen, listen to what God wants to say to you in this passage and perhaps our other pastors just to share a little bit of what you sense the Lord uh, saying to you today in Psalm 51. Pastor Nett. I think for me, it starts, it starts with me. It hmm. starts with recognizing my own um, failures and weaknesses and, and it starts with me. God's always there. He knows where I'm at, but I have to search me. Mm -hmm. I have to look into my heart and say, where am I failing in this? And then God's there ready, ready for the cleaning and, and the refreshing. And, and it's up to me to come to him. And I hear him saying, I'm here. Mm -hmm. I'm waiting for you. Mm -hmm. Um, so I just need to come to him. 
mm. and, and just to bear it all. Um, but in and through that, um, knowing just how there is, when he talks about, um, um, let me hear your joy and your gladness, that there's hope on the other mm. side. Mm. That afterwards with this clean heart, there's hope and there's joy and there's cleansing. And, and that gives me, um, that fills me. I think for me, what I, what I'm reading here and sensing, you know, verse 16 says, you do not delight in sacrifice or I would bring it. Mm. You do not take pleasure in burnt offerings, but sacrifices and burnt offerings were the way for forgiveness. That was the system that was in place. And yet David's saying, that's not as important as that my heart be right with you. Obedience is better than sacrifice. Um, and so then, I, you know, I, I, again, this scripture has us all examining our hearts. Mm -hmm. And so when I examine mine, how many times have I found that I've fallen short, but have tried to earn that forgiveness and earn his mm -hmm. pleasure and, and, and make sacrifices or do whatever. And yet God, you know, what my sacrifice should really be is a broken and contrite heart to come to him in humility and, and know who I am and know who he is and receive what he has for me mm. and, and be obedient. So, and pastor, you've, you know, we, we both know the phrase obedience is better than sacrifice. That comes from a church renewal, um, mm -hmm. some teaching there. And that just, uh, that just kept ringing in my head over and over again. Um, so that's, that's what I'm sensing for me this morning. All right. Well, thank you for, for sharing that. And, and pastor Ned, I, I love where you ended up there with that sense of hope. Mm-hmm. Because sometimes when we take the journey inward, uh, hmm. you know, all we see is what isn't yeah. or the great need. But if we don't have a sense of hope uh, on the other side of it, we're, we're simply left in our own despair. Mm -hmm. And uh, that that's the icing on the cake, so to speak. Thank you for bringing that out. And, and Pastor Bradley, you've uh, already helped us to move forward on the obedience section. Uh, obedience is better than sacrifice. Uh, so, uh, do you want to start us off there? Where is that taking you? Oh my goodness. Well, it really is taking me through the, the point of obedience for me today is to actually stop doing and start reflecting on, on, on who I am in Christ. And, and, you know, you just said about, it can be scary to take that deep dive in because you look at the failings of what you're, you know, what you're not, and you look around you, you can't look within, unfortunately, sometimes without also then looking around and going, but they've got it. And that this person has what I don't have. And, but, but the point of obedience for me today is to humbly come before the Lord and to ask him to cleanse whatever's in there. It says, mm -hmm. cleanse me with hyssop. And, and I, I know you guys know, but hyssop, hyssop is a weed that is not pleasant to be rubbed upon, you know, to take a thing of hyssop and, and cleanse is like taking an SOS pad and, and mm -hmm. right. And, and it can be painful sometimes, but the beauty is that, that he walks with us through, through any of that. So I need to, the point of obedience for me today is to allow him to cleanse me, even if it hurts. Mm. Okay. A spiritual SOS pad. A spirit. Yeah. <laughs> I'm sure we can come up with an acronym for uh, SOS. Do we, we? Do we need to save our souls? I mean, come on. There. It's really, it's right there. Scour oh. our soul. Oh uh, dear. Pastor Nat, uh, a step of obedience for you. I started thinking about this and I was like, okay, this is a new year. Mm -hmm. New year, new beginning, new to start fresh. And that for me, it starts with, searching my heart and, and diving into that. And then I'm not one to quote other people, but Dr. Phil, <laughs> he always says, you can't change what you don't acknowledge. Mm -hmm. And if I want to have true change in my heart, if I want my heart to be truly changed and transformed and cleansed, mm. then I have to acknowledge it first. Mm -hmm. And so for me, my obedience starts there is to, to search and acknowledge where 
where I need to go with God on this journey. Hmm. So that's where my obedience is. Wow. May the Lord uh, help us to go to those places. Mm -hmm. As I, as I was working through this, um, I really sensed a nudge to towards obedience in that uh, I need to uh, run to him and take that inward journey. I, I find that it's easy at times to kind of run or hide or avoid. And there is still a dimension of the road less traveled that God wants to take me on this year. Mm. And I believe that, um, that he is opening that door and my step of obedience is to walk through it. Mm. And I don't know what all that means. Um, but I do know that God is inviting me to a greater level of intimacy with him uh, and a greater level of transparency and honesty with him and myself. Mm. And I'm asking the Lord for the courage and faith to go there. Hmm. And so that's, that's really what I'm hearing uh, this morning as uh, we spend some time here together, which of course leads us to repentance. Uh, th there's something when we acknowledge where we are, we acknowledge who God is. That's, that's absolutely necessary. But there is a transformative work that must happen as well. And that's why the words wash and cleanse and create and restore and deliver are so essential. And so there's a realignment of my, of my life with God in the midst of what he's saying and doing. And as I, as I said, Lord, okay, what is it I need to repent of, of today? And, and it, it just came to me very quickly, the repent of my own pride and self-justification. Uh, that keeps me away from that journey. Uh, you know, David could have, you know, justified why he did what he did, you know. Sure. Uh, uh, yeah, he could go out. He was the king. He he had, you know, his own needs. Uh, he, he could do whatever he wanted. And David could have, you know, tried to justify himself when the prophet came to him, but rather he went to a place of repentance. And so, I'm asking the Lord to just to deal with that in my own heart, that sense of pride and self-justification uh, as, as I move forward in uh, the things that God's called me to do and to be in 2021. Anything else here with, uh, with repentance that you would like to share this morning? Very quickly, I would piggyback off what you said, because for me, the opposite of a broken and contrite heart is a prideful one. Mm-hmm. And that was the, my, that, that always seems to, it always comes back to me when it comes to repentance. It's, I start thinking I'm, I'm in charge <sighs> and I have a proud spirit and a proud heart. And mm. I would confess that as sin. All right. Very quickly for me, some of it is, uh, you know, I think some of it's human nature. We want to avoid what's painful. Mm -hmm. Um, but I think, um, searching my heart, I have to um, ask God to cleanse me with hyssop. Mm -hmm. And like you said, it's going to hurt. Mm -hmm. And, um, but there's hope in that and there's going to be joy mm -hmm. on the other side. Mm -hmm. So I'm, I'm repenting of that, that I need to, I need to be able to hurt a little bit in order to experience that joy again. Mm -hmm. Wow. 2021 could be an interesting year for us. <laughs> yeah, it could. God may take us places that we would not have charted on our own, but he will take us to places, new places in him mm -hmm. that we will learn to trust and to walk in that humility and that sense of brokenness and contriteness. And that's where God's pleasure <laughs> and his joy reside. Mm -hmm. The last part of SMORP, of course, is prayer. And uh, there's so much to, um, to pray for. Where do you even begin? And I know you're praying for your own heart and for your family and those that you love. And those that this year have, will come, will come to know Christ as Savior. Praying for the lost. Yes. Um, 
that that's that's huge. Yeah. Uh, don't ever give up on that. But also recognizing that as we begin to pray, it's a spirit of gratitude that moves us right into God's heart. And I'm going to wrap up this portion here just by saying that I am thankful today. I'm thankful in this new year that that we can know and serve and love a God who is full of mercy and compassion and unfailing love. And that gives us hope. And so uh, we can we can join hearts and hands on that sense of thanksgiving on uh, on this New Year's uh, uh, first Sunday of, of the new year as we move forward. My uh, my heart is to uh, transition, of course, from from this passage into uh, into a time of communion. And as I said a few moments ago, that uh, if you have your bread and juice handy, uh, would you take just a, a quick moment to uh, prepare that as we have prepared here uh, to ask you to participate with us. And as we come to communion today, I'm going to share just a, a very briefly a little bit uh, from the John Wesley Covenant Service, which was a New Year's uh, sacramental service that Wesley led in his day. And uh, the things he spoke about certainly uh, are appropriate and maybe even more significant for the day in which we live. And mm -hmm. part, of the, part of the service is entitled Confession. And here's where David was in Psalm 51. And here's where we are today as we offer our lives with a, with a broken spirit and a contrite heart. Uh, this is the kind of prayer that I believe will take us into the Lord's heart and presence as we begin 2021. I am going to be reading and sharing just briefly from the covenant service. Let us now examine ourselves before God, humbly confessing our sins and watching our hearts, lest by self-deceit we shut ourselves out from his presence. O God, our Father, who has set forth the way of life for us in your beloved Son, we confess with shame our slowness to learn of him, our reluctance to follow him. You have spoken and called, and we have not listened. Your beauty has shone brightly, and we have been blind. You have stretched out your hands to us through our brothers and sisters, and we have passed by. We have taken great benefits with little thanks. We have been so unworthy of your unchangeless love. Forgive us, O Lord, for the poverty of our worship, the formality and the selfishness of our prayers, our inconstancy and unbelief, our neglect of fellowship and of the means of grace, our hesitating witness for Christ, our false pretenses, and our willful ignorance of your ways. Forgive us, O Lord, when we have wasted our time or misused our gifts. Forgive us when we have excused our own wrongdoing or evaded our responsibilities. Forgive us that we've been unwilling to overcome evil with good and that we have drawn back from the cross. Forgive us that so little of your love has reached others through us and that we have borne so lightly wrongs and sufferings that were not our own. Forgive us wherein we have cherished the things that divide us from others and wherein we have made it hard for them to live with us, and wherein we have been thoughtless in our judgments, hasty in condemnation and grudging in forgiveness. If we have made no ventures in fellowship, if we have kept in our heart a grievance against another, if we have not sought reconciliation, if we have been eager for the punishment of wrongdoers and slow to seek their redemption, O Lord, have mercy upon us and forgive us, O Lord. What an incredible prayer that is. And as we come to communion this morning, the requirement to participate is not a name on a membership roll or a gathering of our own self-righteousness, mm. but rather it's that place of a broken spirit mm. and a contrite heart. And if you are wanting and desiring to come with us into that inward journey, that place of reflection, that place of transparency 
and honesty before God, regardless of where you find yourself, if you're willing to take that step, I invite you to join us this morning. And so having said that, it is the body of our Lord Jesus Christ, which was broken for you, that will preserve you blameless unto everlasting life. Take and eat this in remembrance that Christ's body was broken for you and be thankful. Let's eat together. And it is the blood of our Lord Jesus Christ, which was shed for you, that will preserve you blameless unto everlasting life. Take and drink this in remembrance that Christ's blood was shed for you and be thankful. Pastor Annette, would you offer a prayer of thanksgiving for the sacrament today. For sure. Father God, I just thank you so much um, for who you are and for your grace and for your love and for your mercy, Father God. I thank you for all you have done for us for the sacrifice of your son so that we can be in relationship with you, Father God. I thank you for um, just who you are and that you gave us the example so that we can continue to grow and be cleansed and be transformed into your likeness, Father God. So for these things, I give you thanks. And Father, I just pray for um, our time, the rest of our time together. And Father, I just thank you once again for who you are. And I just ask these things in your name. Amen. Let's worship together as we continue in the podcast today.
What a beautiful prayer that is this morning. May we make it ours as we begin 2021. Thank you for spending time with us here this morning, this first Sunday of the new year. And again, I just want to encourage you that uh, if you're in close relationship with Christ today, keep walking forward in that faith and obedience. And maybe you'll find yourself in a place where you're searching for spiritual truth and understanding Keep seeking and searching for Christ is closer than you know. Many today in our our community are filled with fear and anxiety, and the uncertainties of our day continue to press in on us. But I offer the peace of Christ to you this morning. His promise is that he will not leave you and he will not forsake you. And maybe you've become distant in your walk with the Lord. I invite you to come home today. He's waiting for you with open arms. And if you're watching this morning and you do not know Christ as Lord and Savior, he knows your name. And there's no better time than right now, the first of this new year, to open your heart to him and invite him to be your Savior and Lord. Call to him and he will answer. Thank you for joining us today. Thank you for reaching out to us and connecting with us and to uh, be a part of what God is doing in the, in this new year through the ministry here, along with so many others, we're part of God's mission in the world. And as he is the one who is calling uh, people home back to himself. Pastor Bradley, how shall we exit today? Gracefully, ladies and gentlemen yes. and pastors, thank you for being a part of this and for having this time together. We look forward to seeing you again next week right here at 10 a.m. live on Facebook and on YouTube. Don't forget to like and subscribe to those so that you get notified. And ladies and gentlemen, you know how we like to exit here. Until next time, stay holy, stay humble, stay hungry, and stay healthy.